But I really wanted to come tonight, to come to show my support. But more than that, to come to give my commitment to Julian, to Stella, to all those who believe in human rights and justice, that I will continue campaigning with you until extradition is dropped and until Julian is free. George Orwell once wrote that, in a time of deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. And I often think of that quote when I think of Julian. Because beyond all the headlines, that, that is what this case comes down to. In a world where lies have come to dominate our politics, we have a journalist who is, as we meet here tonight, being held in a maximum security prison in our country for highlighting the truth, who has been languishing there for many years, often in cruel and degrading conditions, as though he's a convicted criminal. Imprisoned not because he's charged with any crime in this country, but because of his journalistic work, which we've just seen. Because of his work to tell the truth. A truth that the powerful did not want the public to see. A truth about war crimes, of human rights abuses, and breaches of international law, committed <coughs> by our government and its closest global allies. And now, because of that publishing work, we have the shameful situation where a journalist could be jailed in a US super maximum security prison for life, aided by the UK Home Secretary, who signed a warrant for his extradition to the United States yeah. of America. We simply cannot stand by while common practices in journalism, practices that have long served the public interest, are criminalised in this way, because this case is not simply about Julian Assange and the work he did. Regrettably, our country has been involved in too many unjust wars in recent years. Much of what we know about the crimes committed in those wars, in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere, was exposed by the fearless work of Julian Assange. That's work that I admire, but that's not the point. This case is about a more important principle. I brought together a cross-party group of MPs on numerous occasions over the past four years has tried to raise awareness of Julian's case in Parliament and beyond. We've tried to get to visit Julian in prison because we were worried about he, how he was being treated. We've tried to pressure our Home Secretary to not sign the extradition warrant. We've called on the United States President to drop the extradition request and we've lobbied the US Attorney General to do so likewise. <clears throat> One point that we've always made in building that broad alliance of MPs who have backed Julian, I think it was 40 MPs from eight parties who wrote to the US Attorney General, is this. This does not stop with Julian Assange. This case, in my opinion, will have a chilling effect on journalism. And in my opinion, it's designed to have a chilling effect on all journalists. By choosing this course of action, first Donald Trump and now other powerful politicians in the United States, as well as our own Home Secretary, have sent a warning, a warning to journalists in our country and worldwide. It appears to be an act of intimidation. It sets a dangerous precedent for other journalists <coughs> and media organisations. Let's remember that Julian was invited to our country by the Guardian newspaper. He worked with some of the biggest names in publishing, the New York Times, Der Spiegel, Le Monde, and El Pais. His exposure of crimes that were being done in our name is a central part of the democratic function of journalism. And that's why Reporters Without Borders, the International Federation of Journalists, Press Freedom Group's Article 19, Index on Censorship, and the European Centre for Press and Media Freedom, as well as our very own National Union of Journalists, have all stated that Julian Assange, and I quote, is being prosecuted for exposing US rendition, unlawful killing, and the subversion of the judiciary. And that's why they had 
that it creates a dangerous legal precedent, allowing any journalist in Britain to be prosecuted and extradited. It's why Amnesty International has labelled the case politically motivated and unjustified, and said that it undermines press freedom. And over the coming months, it's essential that we repeat those arguments, that this case is about defence of one of the great freedoms, the right of the press to hold governments to account. This case is a landmark moment, one that will see if our country wants to be seen as a beacon of a free press, or if it's going to allow the undermining of a core democratic right. And we should also be very concerned about the extradition treaty that's been used to sign off the extradition warrant of Julian Assange to the United States. This extradition treaty and so many others signed with the US are often so one-sided that they allow the US to effectively police what happens in countries across the world. And I especially commend David Davis MP for his work on highlighting this in Parliament. Because when this legislation was brought to Parliament in the first place, assurances were given that it would exclude extradition for political matters or for so-called political crimes. Yet that is exactly, I'm afraid, where we are. In closing, I want to briefly look at what's happening in Gaza. There we've seen over 100 days of Israel's brutal onslaught. And in those horrific events, we've seen only too clearly the importance of a journalism that is prepared to expose war crimes and human rights abuses. The images we've seen will haunt us forever, and they've helped the world see the real injustice taking place. We say that truth is the first casualty of war, and it's clear that there's a targeting of journalists in Gaza, with more journalists killed there, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, in the first 10 weeks of Israel's war than have ever been killed in a single country over an entire year. That war again highlights why we need fearless journalism that exposes war crimes, that exposes human rights abuses, and why we need to protect fearless journalists. This is a time when the world needs more Julian Assange's. Yes. The world needs more of a fearless journalism of WikiLeaks because, as Julian once remarked, if wars <coughs> can be started by lies, peace can be started by truth. Thank you.